Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and yesterday Apple released macOS Monterey version 12.1. This is the first major update to macOS Monterey since its release, and it brings new features and some much needed bug fixes as well. And this particular update, if you're not seeing it, you can go to your software updates in system preferences and just go to software update and you should see it there. However, if you're a developer or beta tester and you had a version on earlier, this is the same build as RC2 or release candidate two. And you can tell that by clicking on the version number and you'll see it's build number 21C52. It's the same build, you've just had it a few days early. Now this particular update was released alongside iOS 15.2, iPadOS 15.2, watchOS 8.3, tvOS 15.2, and HomePodOS 15.2 as well as a new version of Xcode. All of those are available now if you haven't seen them already. So if you have a Mac OS Monterey supported Mac, you should be seeing this update. Now, as you can see, I'm running this on a 16 inch MacBook Pro with the new M1 Max, and this particular update seems to run really well on it, but let's first talk about what's new. So we'll go ahead and close this. And the first update is something that Apple showed with the release or the initial announcement of Mac OS Monterey, and that is SharePlay. SharePlay allows you to share different things together with someone on a FaceTime call, such as music or TV. So let me show you how that works. So if I place a FaceTime call, and as you can see, I'm on a FaceTime call. And if I open an app such as music, it will pop up. And in my notifications, you'll see it says choose content to use SharePlay. So I have the option to choose something to share with someone while I'm using FaceTime. Also, you have the option to screen share this little icon here. If I go on my iPhone and share my screen, you'll see the screen pop up here in just a moment. So I'm screen sharing. And if I swipe home, you'll see it will pop in and you'll see here is my screen. So now I can share my screen, what I'm doing as I'm swiping through and it's what's on my display. You're seeing the exact same thing. And it's just letting me know that my microphone is muted. That's what that noise was. And you can see what I'm doing on my iPhone. You can screen share not only with an iPhone, but an iPad and a Mac as well. So if I go ahead and close this, we'll close FaceTime. With SharePlay, you can not only just share your music, but also TV shows and podcasts and more so you can view them together with someone else or multiple people. Now within music, Apple has updated Apple music a little bit with a new plan. So if we go to browse, you'll see that we have explore all the ways to listen to Apple music using just your voice. And so there's a new Siri music plan that's $4.99 per month. If you want to spend a little bit less, but you don't need the visual interface of Apple music. And so you can still access your your music apps just like before, but now you can access Apple Music for $4.99 and use your voice only to do things such as play the voice tutorial as it says here, or maybe ask Siri to play different albums and more. So that's a new option if you want to do that. However, if you want a family plan, it's the same cost, $15 or so per month, depending on where you live. Now the next new thing has to do with photos. So if we go into photos, Within photos, if you click on memories, memories has been updated with some new transition styles and has similar updates to what we get with iOS 15. So you have different photos here. You have a different style. If you click on this button here and then click the three dots, the menu, you can now sort them based on short, medium or long. You can edit the title. There's new transitions. You can add music and more. So that's been updated. There's also additional memories that they've added, such as international holidays, child focused memories, trends over time and improved pet memories. So those have been updated. Now to go along with photos, Apple has added expanded protections for children in this update. Now specifically communication safety within messages and search. And as you can see in their press release here, there's actually an example from Apple showing that if someone sends a photo that maybe a child should not see, it will use the neural engine or the processor to determine whether or not there's something that could be sensitive in it. If there is, it will warn them and say, are you sure you want to view it? If they continue, they can view it. It says it's your choice, but make sure you feel safe. And also you could message a grown up or message someone that you trust, whether that be a parent or guardian or someone else. And so this is using the processor on device. It's not 
sharing any information with Apple. And this is not the same thing as CSAM photo scanning protection. So this is completely separate. That has been delayed indefinitely, but the child protections are here and only for a child. If you're not a child, this won't even show up. So 13 or younger, and it will warn you of that information. So that's something they've updated in this update. Again, that continues to Siri, Spotlight, and Safari Search to help protect children as well. Now, Apple has updated a new feature that they've talked about for a while, and that has to do with digital legacy. Now, this is easily accessible on an iPhone, but basically what it does is make it easy to access your information should you pass away or something happen to you. You can access your information and hand it off to someone else, after you pass away, or they could do the same and give you that access yourself. I have not been able to find an easy way to do this on the Mac. Typically you would go to your Apple ID and then under your ID, you would click on password and security under password and security. This is where it would be. That's where it is on your iPhone, but it will unlock that information for you on your Mac as well. So should something happen to you, you can get your photos out of there or your loved one can take care of any additional things they need to off of your computer. Also in this update, if you're subscribed to iCloud plus, you'll have the option to hide your email in a new message that you're sending. So if you click on from, you'll see, we have hide my email, which creates a random address that forwards to your inbox. So if you have iCloud plus, you can set this up. So maybe someone messages you, or maybe you want to send an email to someone, but you don't want them to have your initial email address because you're not sure who it is. You can hide it using this option. So before you could do this from settings, but now you can do it directly in mail. The TV app also gets a slight update. And if we go into TV, you'll see at the top, there's a new store tab. We can now purchase or rent movies and TV shows directly from the app. So Apple is integrating everything into the TV app, just like they did with music and separating it away from iTunes. So the iTunes app is no longer necessary to purchase your TV shows or movies. Also, there's an update in stocks. So if we go into stocks again, in Launchpad, open up stocks, We'll click on Apple and you can see there's a new chart type here for year to date. So this is just an additional option to help you sort your information. They've also listed the current currency for this area. So USD for Apple that's been updated with 12.1. Reminders also has a slight update along with notes and what they've updated has to do with tags. So if we go into reminders under reminders, you'll see, we have a couple tags here. Now I can select multiple tags and then either rename them or I can delete them at the same time. So I can option click and delete them or rename them if they're similar. And you have the option to select multiples at once where you couldn't do that before. This also carries across to notes. Now this update also includes fixes for Mac and quite a few fixes for the new 16 inch MacBook pro and other Macs that just released. But the first thing has to do with desktop and screen savers. So within settings under desktop and screen savers, sometimes before this update, they would appear blank after selecting a photo from your photo library. So maybe you're setting your own custom screen saver. It sometimes just wouldn't work properly. So that has been updated. So it works now. Also a major fix is the trackpad trackpad could become unresponsive with taps or clicks. So this was a big problem for quite a few people, whether or not you're using tap to click, that could be an issue for some where it just wouldn't work properly. So clicking and tapping on the trackpad have been updated. Also external displays sometimes wouldn't charge macbook pro or macbook air if they were connected using thunderbolt or USB C. so if that was happening to you that should be resolved now so when you're connected to whether it be a pro display xdr or something else it should now work properly also hdr video playback on youtube should be resolved now so if you're using safari sometimes it would crash on 2021 macbook pro computers so this 16 inch macbook pro however sometimes the option for hdr doesn't show up properly still but that's something between YouTube and Apple. Now, if you have one of the newer MacBooks with the notch at the top, sometimes the menu bar could be obscured by that notch. They've resolved that issue in this update, so it should no longer do that. They won't be hidden. They'll just be to the side of them. Also, if you're using a new 16 inch MacBook pro with MagSafe, sometimes MagSafe wouldn't charge if the lid was closed and the system was shut down. That's been resolved in this update. So if that was a problem for you, it should now work properly. Also searching in finder and text edit seems to work again. If you're looking through your documents on iCloud, so that seems to be resolved. That's not mentioned by Apple, but it's something that I mentioned.
Now there's some security updates as well, and we can see those on Apple's security website. And they've updated this since they've released macOS Monterey 12.1. You can click on it here and I'll link this in the description, but you can see the updates that they've pushed for security from everything from airport, where it said a device may be passively tracked by BSS IDs and they fixed it by an access issue was addressed with improved access restrictions. And it also gives people that have helped notify Apple of the issue. So that's something they've fixed as well as issues with Bluetooth core audio graphic drivers and also kernel as well as launch services, model IO sandbox and more. So you can see all of the different fixes here. Again, I'll link this in the description if you want to see it within this update, they've added support for the new AMD RX 6600 graphics card. So if you have a Mac pro or maybe an eGPU, you can now use this graphic card natively on the Mac and it should work properly. So that's everything in Mac OS 12.1 and I've been using it for a few days, even editing videos with it. And it's been very stable. I've had no issues. I find that it's actually a little bit faster when exporting videos, it seems like, and in general, it seems to stay a little quieter also. So even though it's in high performance mode, when plugged in, it seems to be a little bit quieter than it was before. So if we go to battery, you can see here, power adapter and energy mode is high power. It seems to stay a little bit quieter than it was. Maybe it's got some better, better thermal control, but either way, it seems to be fine and stable and I wouldn't really hesitate installing it. So if you're wondering if you should install Mac OS 12.1, if you're already on Monterey, then absolutely. However, if you have production level applications and you're on maybe Mac OS Big Sur, you may want to make sure there's compatibility before switching as there's some issues with things such as audio and more. But for me, editing video and final cut using native Apple apps, Pixelmator pro things like that. It seems to work fine and it's been very stable. No issues whatsoever. If you found anything else in this update, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link the iPhone version in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.